हेलो आई एम अभिषेक सेशन 17 बी सी 1173 आई एम मनन रजोतिया 17 बी सी 1268 एंड आई एम अंश गोयल 17 बी सी 1278 uh, our topic for the review is automated student attendance system using image processing uh, we know uh, student attendance system or basically any attendance system what the conventional procedure is uh, that we follow uh, like the faculty or the person in charge is supposed to call out names of all the participants of the students in in her or his class and uh, that makes it a very cumbersome or you know long process it it is also very time taking because it wastes a lot of time so uh, what we thought that using state of the art machine learning algorithms uh, we could you know harness some of our coding abilities so that we can provide a nice solution so that student learning system can be you know revolutionized actually it has already been done we have just tried to make it better uh, so it will be a really nice idea if we just click a picture of the class or you know the bunch of students and just after that it is you know we are able to recognize uh, that if a student is present in the class or not or the attendance automatically gets marked uh, so it's a really good idea and i think uh, it will work wonders in a practical scenario uh, so this was our motivation dataset identification uh, was a really difficult task uh, because we needed to have faces of all the students in the class uh, at starting uh, we aimed that we'd record all our uh, 62 you know our class consists of 62 students so initially we thought that we test it on our class uh, but due to this pandemic situation our uh, data set has been limited but still we have tried to get best results and uh, we have succeeded we will be explaining it to you in a short while the system overview goes like this uh, first we create a database how do we create a database we acquire a video of the prospect uh, and uh, in this video uh, is supposed to look at the webcam so from that we extract frames and out of that we extract faces by pre processing so face detection comes into place uh, we use state of the art face detection algorithms uh, so that our system you know works flawlessly and after that after faces have been detected we uh, run through a database what what a practical what in a practical scenario after our uh, product gets deployed what we will do is uh, we uh, would have already created a database by then so the image uh, that we will capture on day to day basis during uh, when, when our uh, software would have been deployed uh, we would feed it to our system uh, to look into the database as to which face is this like it will match it face recognition algorithms will come into place and after that automatically the attendance would get marked yeah uh, thank you manan so i think we should jump right through the procedure so the first step was data set creation so since we couldn't have 62 faces because of the covid situation so we tried to manage it by having four faces which was mine Uh, one of our friend raghavs and my father and my mothers so manan and ansh handled the data circulation part they'll explain you and hand over to manan uh hello the- actually actually we have created a data set so a summarization of the data set has to be done so we have used the principal component analysis which is a statistical procedure that allows us to convert our big data into a small data so it which is right uh, which is practical also because we can easily visualize them and uh, analyze them also and uh, our main motive here is to uh, summarize our data is that we can easily sh- follow the trends and jumps in our data set now and we'll take i agree with you once uh, as discussed earlier uh, data set creation uh, was a very difficult task a very challenging task for us uh, we are beginners in 
the field of machine learning and deep learning uh, so we you know found we were really excited and may, maybe a little tense to find a new technique or a really fast technique so that we could you know pre process the data that we'd collect from our prospects and extract faces from it basically create our data set uh, so uh, what we have used for uh, data set creation are the har cascade classifiers uh, there are state of the art face recognition algorithms but basically har cascade classifiers do uh, they, they're very similar to convolutional kernels uh, which you know normally work in a cnn or a deep learning space uh, so like a kernel you know it operates on a set of pixels it's the same with har cascade classifiers uh, the difference is that it is much more faster it has you know uh, for us it has found those set of features you know for which the threshold is really better and uh, for uh, whom we will not have to calculate all possible features uh, from a image uh, that we have uh, suppose there's a n cross n pixel image that we have gathered it would be a really you know very huge amount of data that we would create in amount uh, in uh, the form of features if we would use naive techniques uh, but now that we have uh, shifted to har cascade classifiers uh, the speciality is that uh, they use normal filters uh, like edge filters or rectangular filters with four neighborhoods and uh, what the speciality is that there are a lot of regions in our face uh, when we go to detect a face in a normal uh, image uh, what we observe is that there's a line filter and there's a boundary filter so there are a lot of regions in our face which are not that prominent for a, a classifier to classify whether this portion is a is a part of a face or a part of a background so what har cascade classifiers do is that they focus on those regions which really tell us like there's a face present in the image uh, and uh, let me uh, throw some more light on what these regions are specifically uh, just for example uh, our eyes uh, there's a line filter if the line filter is applied right over our eyes uh, what it shows is that there's a difference in pixel intensities usually in our uh, you know between our eyes and uh, the remaining part maybe our cheeks or our forehead which lie above or below our eyes so this is a nice relationship uh, that har cascade flyers uh, classifiers have you know harnessed uh, so they really work well in face detection in a normal scenario uh, so how do we train our har cascade classifiers we have provided them with positive and negative images uh, what do i mean by positive and negative images positive images mean what uh, those images that have a face in them and negative images of those images that do not have a face in them so we have trained it on a large set of positive and negative images so that our har classifier can really identify what the weights are for those specific features uh, so that for uh, for only for those specific features for whose threshold value is really better and uh, they can give us optimum results because you cannot consider all the features that can be generated from an n cross n pixel image so what har cascade classify does is that it you know prioritizes uh, that only these features first need to be tested and uh, that is the literal meaning of cascade Uh, if we have uh, sorted out maybe a hundred features, uh, that only these hundred features need to be tested. All these hundred features are not tested at once. In a image, it is really easy to uh, you know re recognize that if a face is present in an image or not. And how uh, do we succeed in recognizing if an image has a face in it or not? Uh, because of the cascade, uh, har cascade, because of the cascading property. What is uh, what it does is that uh, there are a really high priority. features uh, like four or five of these features uh, that we apply at the first stage only if the uh, image passes these features like it proves gives positive result for these features we go on to you know pass on the image uh, to our next features and this cycle goes on so uh, the crux of uh, har cascade classifiers is that uh, we don't need to provide all the features of the image at once we can uh, provide it at stages if the image is rejected at an earlier stage so that you know uh, improves our computational complexity a lot 
and uh, that is why our cascade classifiers are a state of the art technology uh, for detecting faces in a image over to you abhishek yeah uh, rightly said madan and uh, one of the main features by uh, so uh, before going into that uh, since our objective of this project is face recognition and not face detection we used an already provided transfer learning api by opencv which is the har cascade frontal frontal face default to uh, capture the faces from images so our procedure is basically that we'll feed the image containing 62 faces to the uh, classifier or the computer now yes. the har cascades classifier will find the 62 images so basically it's a, it's a transfer learning model which is trained for boundary box regression so it uh, captures all 62 faces uh, it crops out the faces and gives us 62 images now these 62 images will be fed to the uh, will be fed to the classifiers now coming to face recognition for uh, classification we have trained two models one is an eigen faces model and another is a cnn a classical cnn which is a convolution neural network so first i'll try to explain the uh, the eigen face model uh, manan can i share the screen uh, yeah please uh, is my screen visible uh yes yes screen is visible abhishek yeah so we've used uh, we've used jupyter notebooks for eigen face classifier so uh, before that as you can see here for the training data i've used for uh, the faces of four people myself my father my friend dagav and my mother so and i've used almost 500 images for each class because training a deep neural network as we all know training a deep neural network takes a lot of data uh, so now what the question arises is what is eigen faces eigen faces is just a fancy name for principal component analysis for example and now what is principal component analysis now we know that uh, images have high dimensions for example a simple row a simple row low resolution image is 150 cross 150 for example now the total number of features for each image will be 22500 and now since we have in this case we have four examples and the four examples are 500 images each so that makes us 500 into 22500 so uh, it's a lot of data so there's the, so there will be a lot of computation and our laptops don't have that capability to perform this computation also one more factor that we have to consider is so when we input a face when we in, when we in, input an image of a face only a small part of that image is useful for example whether the background is white or black it's not useful uh, so if for example i have five images and the, the images are of different people but the background is same so if we use cosine similarity to find the similarity between images so if then if the image uh, occupies say at most 35% of the image so 75 so, so the rest of 65% will be similar to all to the rest four images so but this similarity we do not want the similarity so what we do is we try to uh, reduce the number of features we try to reduce the dimensionality of our features to first of all to increase computation second of all to only retain the features which have high variance so for this we use a statistical method called principal component analysis to explain this i'll explain this with a simple graph for example part of my drawing so for example this is the x and y axis and we have data points like this so these are the data points so right now a point has been projected on the x axis and the y axis so the dimension is 2 so any of a point will look like a into i cap plus b into j cap but now when we look at it what if what if we were to change our basis so for example if we change our basis our basis vectors to this line and this line 
and then we project these points to the spaces. So we can see that we can represent these lines, we can represent these points as a part of one feature only, not two features. So for example, if we're doing classification and the uh, points on the left side are A, the points on the right side, points on the below side are A, and points on the above side are B. So if you use these two dimensions to do the same, to classify them, fine, it will work well. But if we reduce the dimensionality and only use this feature, the projected feature, we can uh, then we can achieve the same thing by just having a linear mm -hmm. classifier which will draw a line like this. So A will be projected points projected over here and B will be the points projected over there. So here we can see we can have two inferences. One is that the dimensionality is reduced and second the variance along this axis is now of no use. Yes, this, this does lead to information loss but that information is not important. That information is redundant. So this is what PCA does. So uh, Anish will further explain PCA. Yeah, as you said, session, those are the very redundant values. These are not correct value, uh, not necessary values. Uh, we also know that PCA is very flexible tool, uh, which allows us the analysis of data set that may contain, for example, multi collinearity or missing values or the imprecise measurements. So our goal is to extract just the important features from a data set and to express them and just to uh, exactly just to have uh, just to uh, express the, those inform important feature information only. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, now I'll share my screen again. The main goal of using principal component analysis is that uh, it's not viable to use you know n cross n image and feed it directly into a neural network. Uh, so what we want to do is that we want to reduce the dimensions. So PCA is basically a exactly. really, really good dimensionality reduction technique, which Anish and Abhishek just explained. Exactly, Manan. So here I have now uh, loaded the data set, and you can see I had I have uh, resized all my images to 150 plus 150. Mm -hmm for yeah. each class, Abhishek, Girish, Uma, and Raghav. And I have also converted it to gay scale since the neural network is very simple. I mean, not very simple, uh, very, I'll say, it's not a very deep neural network. So we need to minimize computation as much as possible. Maybe if we have supercomputer, we can even have three channels. But right now we are considering, we are considering and base scale images. So then I have randomized, I've collected it, the data set and randomized it. We have 2015 images in total. Uh, these are the labels. And obviously one of the main uh, pre-processing techniques is scaling. Scaling is really very important because it leads to faster convergence in a neural network. If we scale our features, most mainly in images, we can also do by normalizing uh, the features by dividing them by 255 but then i ha uh, but then i scaled this i i had to use standard scaler for this because we are applying pca the pca what pca requires us that our column vectors are zero mean zero mean is because uh, when we are applying pca uh, we only retain the eigen vectors of the matrix 1 by m x transpose x where x is our feature space so when uh, we are retaining the vector we only retain the uh, for example if you have if i have to retain 512 features out of 22500 so i will only retain those 512 features whose eigenvalues are very high so basically the principal components the uh, change of basis principal components are the eigenvectors of this matrix. Now, coming back to our code, uh, uh, yeah, and for that matrix, this is basically called the covariance matrix. So, for the covariance matrix, it's actually like this. Pardon my handwriting. So, this is x minus mu. So, mu is the mean over there. So, if 
since we made a data zero mean, so we have actually been there. neglected mu and just made it x transpose. So it's easy calculation. So yeah, we, we basically it, find the largest eigenvectors out of our, you know, this covariance exactly. matrix because that will center our readings around the maximum variance due to which we'll be able to reduce our dimensionality. Exactly. Now, since I've scaled these features and a number of classes is four, and this is just normal stuff. I have split the data. We have split the data into X train, X test. 80% of is train data. Now coming to PCA, we have used the SKLearn API, and we found the number of components to be 512. We tried for 64, 128, 1024, and this is just some kind of uh, some kind of a hyperparameter, and just we found that 512 works best. There's no proof for this. There's just heuristics. So now I've reduced, I've printed my reduced training. So now you can see that which uh, the features which were earlier 22,500 now are just only 512 features. And we have 512 basis, basis vectors of our images. Now uh, the question arises that how do these basis vectors look like? So I've also tried to, so we've also tried to plot these basis vectors. So out of the 512 principal components, the change basis, we have tried to plot 16 of them and put them as faces. So you can see that. Now, when we combine 512 of these, we can produce one of our images. For example, this is one of my friends, Raghav. You can see that after I combined, you can see that here, uh, I've done and the dot product of basis vectors and example. A example is the main image. So when I projected that ex that example original image to the new basis vectors, I got this image. And we can clearly see that even in 512 dimensions, I can clearly uh, tell that he's Raghav. So our aim is justified that PCA has in fact retained the most important features. Now, if I do this for say, some other data point, say 412. So this is my mom. And we, we can clearly see that she's our mom. Now coming to the, yeah, we can see the, this is the test data, 512 features. We have printed the test data. Now come to, now we have come to the designing part of a neural network. We designed a simple three layer neural network with 512 units each. And uh, since ReLU is the most common and fastest uh, activation function, we've used ReLU and softmax. We, we also tried multiple uh, variations of neural networks. We tried seven layers, five layers, 10 layers. This just worked well. And yeah, we've used dropout, uh, 0.5 dropout to try to regularize our, uh, our model to unseen data. So we trained, as you can see, that our classification, our, our accuracy has as 99.8 or even one. We reached one because that's mainly the problem of our, one of the, the one of the drawbacks of our data set. Since we had to collect data sets by ourselves, uh, we you can say that there was not much variance in our data. So if if we had good, if we had a very good data set with with say a good variance, we might not be able to achieve a 100% accuracy. Exactly, Abhishek. So now I tried this on the test data. So I tried this on the test data and you can see that the loss is nearly zero and the accuracy is one for the test data. Now I'll try this for one of the, the examples in front of you. So uh, this is my, before that I'll show you what data I trained on. Yeah, th this is the data I trained on. These are my images. Dagab's images. These are my dad's images. And these are my mom's images. Now I've tried to test this on a somewhat different image from the one that uh, which I used for trading, for example, 
for the training, I use this image. You can see that this is not quite similar to the one I have used for testing the data. Uh, one second. Bro. Yeah. yeah, so I use this image. I'll run this. I resize this to, one, to 150 cross 150. This is what the original grayscale scale image look, looks like. Flattened the image, of course, to, for filling it in the neural network. Now I also have to transform it to the new principal component basis. So I transformed it to the basis and got the dimensions of 1 cross 5 and 2. And now this is a reconstructed image. So we can see that we can somehow, we can somehow uh, easily classify that it's me. So the variance is retained. Now we feed this in a model and see what it is. It's one. Not encodable at one, you know, one means subject, zero one zero zero means that, zero zero one zero means uh, uh, Raghav, and zero 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 one means mom. So since it was one zero zero zero, so it means it predicted me. So we can see that our model is working very good. Now, the next model that we try to train, uh, I think my computer is going slow. We might want to sum it up, Abhishek. We are running short on time. Sure, sure. Yeah, now the second model that we used was a, a convolution neural network. We all know convolution neural network for this. Uh, the input size of the images was 64 cross 64 and we use grayscale because uh, our computer does not have that much computation power obviously four sizes bad size was 20. now uh, we had a one two three four five five a five layered conversion neural network with three max pooling layers max pooling layers are used to reduce the dimensionality to the next layer and it also makes the network kind of robust to a lit to translation invariance it makes the model translation invariant so i've used the relu activation function of course because it's the fastest and the input dimension is 64 cross 64 cross 1 because we're using grayscale soft mass soft mass activation this is model summary i've used adam a rate of 0 0.01 adam is the, the adaptive movement uh, we can see that after 20 epochs, the accuracy is 99.95. This is why the, uh, the accuracy of eigenfaces is more than that of a CNN is because, first of all, CNN is a very complex network. The data I have is just four classes and 500 images, which is very, very less. So for a complex network, and also CNN is a highly regularized network in itself. The number of parameters in the uh, convolution layer is very less so it provides a kind of regularization so that's why the accuracy is 99.9 i saved the model uh, one more thing i did i did not use data of your know, data augmentation because images of each class and i have taken them with quite a lot of variance so i didn't think i need augmentation so coming to the end i tried to test this on my dad's photo i don't know why I'm, yeah I think my computer is a little slow. Please play with that. Yeah. Scale image. This, this is one. Now I will try to predict. It comes 0, 0100. 0, 0. It is predicting correctly. As you can see, the confidence level is maximum for the Second one is 9.99 and if I print it, it comes array one. F1 corresponds to my dad. So then will you conclude? Would you like to conclude? Wait. I'll stop sharing. That was a really informative session, Abhishek. So as we saw, CNN 
is a really complex and vast technique that we have tried to tap for our application. What, we, what, the, uh, what are the challenges that we saw through our development phase was that uh, not only the implementation part was tough, but what to implement, decide what to implement was really tough. Uh, we are, uh, as uh, earlier said, we are new to this. Uh, we did not know what techniques would work uh, perfect or uh, better or give uh, nice results uh, for our scenarios. So it took a lot of time for us to research and you know find uh, relevant fields so that we can apply certain methods to our application. Uh, just like we came up with hard cascade classifiers, the implementation came up uh, afterwards, but initially we had to decide which feature to use or which technique to incorporate into our model. And after that, as we saw uh, how PCA uh, worked like a charm and you know just reduce the dimension of our images uh, that we were going to feed to a classifier or to our convolution neural network as explained by Abhishek and Anj. Uh, so at, at last, I'd like to conclude uh, by, you know, that it's not with a machine learning algorithm or with a deep learning algorithm. It's not always necessary that if we train it a lot or if we have a large set of features to train our it model, will exactly. it will work. Exactly. That is the curse of dimensionality as, you know, said by data science experts. Uh, so it is not good to overtrain our model, which we all know, but it is also not good to have a lot of features in our, uh, you know, data, uh, you know, extract a lot of features from our data because uh, there comes a point after which a lot of features only lead to degradation of performance of our model. So I guess we've, exactly. uh, and we've succeeded in coming up yeah. with a nice technique, nice results as well. Yeah. And more than the complexity of the model, I think uh, uh, the choice of the features is what matters the most. Because before this, Ansh and Manan also tried to use the uh, local binary patterns, which are the state of the art, which are the state of the art features which are used for face recognition with support vector machines. But turns out they didn't work for our for our data set. It exactly. Gave an accuracy uh, of around seventy percent, right, Manan? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, local binary patterns, uh, we thought they'd work really well. Uh, we have worked with them in the past. Uh, you know, we knew how to, you know, operate with them inside out, but still they did not work well for our data. And that is the thing with machine learning algorithms and how to apply them practically onto data sets. Uh, but uh, finally we came up, as Abhishek said, we came up with a nice technique, how, how to use CNN and uh, cascade classifiers along with you know, PCA to optimize our algorithm and to get fine results. We would have liked it uh, uh, had our data set been more, been more varied, but we'll definitely try that in future. Uh, we are satisfied. Exactly. With the, yeah, the future works can include a good data set. We are very sure that the hard work, the amount of hard work that we have put in, that the models that we have trained will work very good on a good data set, a good varied and a large data set. And the second point, uh, if we have, for example, the uh, database of the students of our of our college, Siamese networks, there's a thing called Siamese networks, they can be used for one shot learning. So that's, uh, uh, for example, you just train 6,000 people and then you don't have to train the next 5,000 or, uh, uh, or the incoming batch. You just use the embeddings of, the, of that network and use that to classify. So I think with this, we'll conclude our presentation. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.